Hey y'all, it's Teresa with One Love, One Light. Welcome to your late night light. Let's see what's going on. Holy Spirit, what do we have for the late night light? Let's shuffle these up a little bit. Okay, and we have the two of sacred circles so I feel like there's a change coming you may have foresight on this but this is about looking at what's truly important to you seeing the true uh, priority in things but we'll see what else comes out Holy Spirit what else do we have and we have a time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo. So there's something about charity, about seeing something more in someone, seeing the strength in someone else I'm getting. In choosing embodied presence at this moment, I attain clarity, recognize my innate empowerment, and awaken my natural healing energies. So there's something, this could be a conversation, this could be a cutting of cords or a forgiving or apologizing to somebody that's really going to empower you as well as the other person. Let's see what's going on. And we have the Nine of Swords. So it's something that has been eating you up, has been keeping you up at night. Maybe even nightmares. And we have judgment. Yeah, so there's something very powerful about this releasing, releasing any kind of karmic connection, releasing any energetic cord to the connection with others. We have the Mother of Swords as a challenge. So this is a clean cut. This is like really. Um, Cutting out all the kind of overhead, the um, the heart heavy stuff, forgiving, apologizing, whatever it is that will break this kind of negative cord that you have with this person. And we have the Ace of Pentacles, so it's going to give you the potential for a bright new beginning. And the outcome, the Ace of Wands. Wow, so two aces on the table. It's really going to empower you, inspire you, motivate you to take action. The bottom of the deck is the Mother of Cups, so I feel like it's going to clear your heart. It's going to clear the other person's heart. There's going to be this emotional cord that's cut and it doesn't mean that you're not going to be involved or in a relationship with this person but there's a negative cord that's connecting you to in a negative way it goes back and forth of draining you of overpowering your thoughts and it's time to reconcile that so that it's in balance so that the karma can be cleared all right, show me this Nine of Swords. And we have the Three of Cups. Yeah, really being able to bring it together. And this could definitely be a reconciliation. This could restore a relationship, a family relationship, friendship. What is this judgment about? And we have the Innocence of Wands, the Page of Wands. So I do feel like 
it's going to prompt you to take the first step as far as um, taking action, speaking up, um, bringing this, this issue to the table. Show me the Mother of Swords. And we have the chariot. So it's like you you know the direction that you want to go, but I feel like the challenge is letting go of control and giving it to God to carry through to bring victory and success. Show me this Ace of Pentacles. And we have the justice. Yeah, there's that sort of truth balancing things out, really bringing potential to a long-term thing something that's solid as oak. Show me this Ace of Wands. <clears throat> and we have the Eight of Swords. So yeah, being able to take action to break through these thorns and actually see what's beautiful inside. That's what I'm getting here. The bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Wands again. So it's really prompting you to take action. And it's like saying you have the strength to really change this relationship it's going to really be an upheaval for both of you but in the end it's giving you that abundant um, independence this could be really breaking free of codependency yeah and then we have the seven of wands here you will have the higher ground you will be seen um, as bringing calmness and serenity to whatever this kind of volatile connection has been. All right, what's the guidance here? What guidance do we have? What guidance do we have for this situation? Oh. Okay, that's way too many. Well, maybe it's not. It's three. We'll take them. Encouragement. Your love is invaluable to the earth and those around you. Even though you may not always see the positive effect your love has on others, trust for it does. Each time you offer love through a loving gesture, thought, or word, you plant a seed of love. And love always generates more love. Trust and continue your loving work. That just goes along with all of this about being the first to really offer that um, olive branch. Believe, be open to all possibilities and opportunities. Let go of preconceived ideas. There is nothing to fear. You are constantly surrounded by love. Start to believe in yourself and trust your instincts. Wondrous possibilities and opportunities abound, provided you are flexible and retain an open heart and mind believe all is possible and then we have a prayer dear guardian angel help me to be flexible in my attitudes and beliefs help me not to fear the transient nature of life help me to remember the eternal light which emanates from my soul and the eternal light which emanates from the heart of every living thing help me to remember that i am eternally guided and loved by god and all creation amen all right, those are the messages that came through. I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care.